All right, this is our third lecture in Web Week. Um, we, we did a couple of things. What we started with um, uh, about a week ago was looking at how we could download different content from, from the web. Uh, and in particular, we were downloading just kind of simple text files or maybe JSON files and then kind of extracting information from that. Uh, in the next lecture, we learned about um, this new format HTML uh, for describing web pages. And uh, HTML was more complicated than JSON, right? It's kind of designed for humans, right? And to show things in a variety of ways. And we learned how to automatically generate HTML code um, from our Python programs. Uh, in this lecture, we're kind of combining those ideas. Um, we want to be downloading content from the internet, like in the first lecture. Um, but we're going to be dealing with HTML um, as in that second lecture. And I think this is really the hardest piece, right? How can we pull data um, out of HTML pages that we grab online? Unlike JSON, which was originally intended for that purpose, um, HTML was really built for a human first. And, and this is kind of an after the fact, well, how can we write programs that take advantage of this? So to be doing this, we're gonna be learning um, a new uh, Python module that you'll install called Beautiful Soup. Um, Beautiful Soup is a reference to um, uh, Alice in Wonderland. I think there's some sort of turtle that sings a song about beautiful soup. Uh, kind of a great name if you think about it. I mean, what, what is the internet? I mean, there's some beauty to it, but definitely a lot of uh, soup going on. Uh, anyway, um, so there's going to be a few pieces of this. If we want to understand a web page, we have to have some sort of model for it, some sort of structure um, that goes beyond just having a bunch of text and tags, right? And that that model and that structure is called the document object model. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to learn about the beautiful soup module. And then finally, I'm going to uh, create a Python program that pulls information about the 50 states in the United States from Wikipedia and puts all of that data in some sort of table that we can use for analysis. OK, let's talk a little bit about what happens when a web browser visits a page. Okay, so let's say I type in a URL, I hit go, um, that sends a request, and I get some sort of response back, and that response has a few pieces. Um, that first piece is the HTTP header, and that tells the browser what kind of content is this. Is it HTML? Is it an image? Um, something else? It might tell us how long the, the content is. It'll tell us if we have like a 200, which means all is well, or maybe we have a 404, the page is missing. And then finally, we have some HTML at the end, right? So the, the browser gets all that HTML um, out of the page. And then the next thing it does is it, it, is it tries to parse it and generate some sort of uh, model of all the contents on that page. That's called the document object model. Uh, it's very hierarchical because tags contain other tags, right? The HTML tag contains the body tag, uh, which in this case contains an H1 tag and, and a couple anchor tags, right? Remember that anchors are for hyperlinks, right? So it kind of extracts that hierarchical model from the page, right? Here, here's a blow up of that. I can see, okay, there's um, the way I represent that HTML contains the body is I draw an arrow from HTML um, to body. Another difference here, just in terms of vocabulary, is that once this is in this document object model, we're going to call each of these things um, elements, right? A tag is what we're writing inside of those angle brackets inside of the HTML. And uh, a tag is just a way to specify an element, right? So if kind of tags and elements are, are synonymous in your mind, um, that's not a difference I'm going to quibble over. That's fine enough for this course. OK, um, a little more vocabulary. This is actually a review from last time, is we saw that um, some of the tags contain uh, attributes, right? For example, if I have an A tag, uh, the fact that I have an a tag means that I want to link to somewhere, uh, but then I have to have this href attribute to actually show where it's headed to. Right? So elements might contain attributes. Um, they might contain text, not always. Right? In, in, in this case, um, uh, my three elements uh, contain the text welcome, about, and contact. And then finally, um, elements can, might contain other other elements, right? So this is a hierarchy on you can see. You can see it's a recursive structure, right? It's recursive because elements contain other elements, uh, but there's other things as well. They can contain these attributes and text. And so we're going to be learning ways to pull these three types of information out of um, elements on a page.
Okay, just a little bit more vocabulary. Um, so in this case, that body tag contains, uh, well, I guess several tags, including the A tags. And when one tag contains another, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call the first one a parent and the second one um, a child. It's kind of very common uh, vocabulary in these hierarchical um, um, situations. Okay, so the browser uh, from the HTML generates that uh, document object model. And then from that, it actually uses that document object model uh, to render or display um, something on the screen. Okay, so that's what a web browser does. A web browser is only one kind of program that wants to grab data from the internet. Let's say instead of having a web browser like Chrome or Safari or Edge, um, let's say we have our Python program. And our Python program might be trying to visit that exact same page that was visited by, uh, by the web browser, right? So we get the same HTTP response back, and, and there's all these pieces. And depending on what we're trying to do with our Python program, we might be interested in different pieces of that. Um, one, maybe all we really care about is that header, right? And in the header, we have the status code. Is it 200, 400, um, things like that? Uh, for example, I've seen uh, programs before that their only purpose is to uh, check the health of your website, right? Maybe they go through and they make sure that all the, the pages on your website are available, right? Like if I think there's a page there and I try to visit it, um, if I got a 404, that would mean something's wrong and, and maybe somebody should be alerted, right? So maybe we just care about the header. Um, it's also possible we care about the, the kind of text inside of the request, right? Um, in some cases, that text might be, uh, it might be like JSON or CSV, in which case we will have some other means um, uh, to, to parse it. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it's going to be HTML, and what we would really like, what's more convenient, is we could have something like a document object model um, of that HTML, right? It's going to be a pain if we have to use um, the string methods like find and, and, you know, to upper and lower and so on and so forth to try to get information out of here. What will be much easier is if I have some sort of hierarchical model uh, from which I can extract, um, say, elements I'm interested in, maybe the, the text inside of those, right? So instead of the document object model that we normally have, uh, this beautiful soup module that I'm going to be teaching about uh, uh, gives us a nice hier hierarchical model. <clears throat> okay, so you should install this thing. Uh, you, you do that with pip install uh, beautiful soup 4. And then uh, that's abbreviated BS4. And so what you'll usually do is you'll say from BS4 import uh, beautiful soup. Um, notice that when you're installing it, it's all lowercase, but when you're importing it, uh, the B and the S and Beautiful Soup are both capitalized. Okay, so here I'm doing that same import, and that Beautiful Soup thing that we're importing is a new type in Python, right? And, and when I create objects of that type, um, each object is going to represent um, a web page, a model of a web page. Right, and so the way we create new objects of this type is we say uh, beautiful soup, and then in parentheses we say, uh, well, we give it two things. First, we give it a string, and that string is going to contain HTML code, and then after that, we give it another string, and that second string, at least for this class, is always going to be HTML.parser. Right, and all we really care about here is um, extracting HTML. Uh, I think there's other formats that you could use, and you'd pass a different string here. Uh, not relevant to what we want to do in this class, right? So what you really care about is that first argument, and uh, and that's a string containing HTML. And, and where does that come from? Um, you, you know, in this example, I hard-coded, right? I directly in my Python code typed a big string um, with a bunch of tags in it, right? So that's one place it could come. Um, it could also come from uh, using the request module, right? Remember if I say request.get, uh, I can download a web page and get a string containing all the HTML uh, for that page, right? So that, that might be the most common place this string comes from. Um, and then, then finally, uh, maybe I have a file on my computer. I have an HTML file that was downloaded somehow. Um, I could, for example, um, open that like any regular file, um, read all the data into a string, and, and, then, and then create a beautiful soup object just like so. Okay. 
So let, let's look at this particular example. Um, so I see it starts with a B tag, right? I'm looking inside of that HTML string. It starts with a B tag, and then I have items, and then I have UL, uh, and maybe you'll remember from UL, uh, that stands for, uh, UL stands for unordered last, right? Unordered means it's bullets, right? If it was ordered, it would be one, two, three, uh, but it's not ordered, right? So I have an unordered list, and I have three elements in it, uh, list item X, list item B, and list item Z, and then, then I have closing tags after each of those, and then finally a UL. Um, I also see that inside of the li for y, uh, I have bold text, right? So I just drew a picture of what this page looks like on the bottom right. It's the word items in bold, and then bullets x, y, and z, uh, with y being bold. So on the left, right, uh, I, I show what that hierarchical model looks like, okay? You can see when I create my beautiful soup object and put it in doc, um, I, I get this doc at the top, and underneath it, it contains a B and UL tag, and then there's other things inside of that, right? In this case, you can see that each blue piece um, is an element, right? That element comes from that tag, and the pink is the text that, uh, that those elements contain, right? The other thing that you can imagine the elements containing is attributes, but none of these tags have any attributes, do they? Okay, so what's cool about Beautiful Soup is that it lets us search for things, and that's going to be very common anywhere, search for things on a page. Um, for example, maybe you're interested in all the hyperlinks to other pages, right? Uh, in that case, I want to search for all the A tags, and Beautiful Soup makes it very easy to do this searching. Um, uh, in addition to that, um, it, it has various other things, right? For example, there's this prettify method. If I call that, it prints off that same HTML, uh, but just nicely indented, right? So that might be something you try, right? If you're trying to download a big, messy web page that's not very formatted very well, you might first prettify it and just see what it looks like, right? But most of what we want to do is that searching that I was talking about. And, and so the number one method that should be in your notes and that you should be re remembering is find all, find underscore all, right? So doc is my beautiful soup object. I say doc dot find all, and I give it a string, and that string is the name of a tag, right? So if I say li, that means I want all the li tags. Uh, in other words, I'm saying, hey, I want to find all the bullets on this page. And so you run that thing, and it gives you a list of three list objects, right? Lists we're comfortable with. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it gives you a list of three element objects. Lists we're comfortable with, um, elements we're going to be talking more about. Uh, but already, right, since I have this list, I could do things like uh, look up the length of it, and I could find out uh, how many bullets are on the page, right? So, so you can see when I do this find all li. I've highlighted this in a few places, right? In the top, you can see... Um, the parts of the HTML it's finding, and then down below you can see what elements and that hierarchy uh, it's finding. Right? Those correspond to each other. Okay, so like elements is a list, right? So I could also do things like I could loop over. I could say for E and elements, and I could print each of those. And in this case, what I'm doing with it is I'm calling uh, a get text method. Lots of methods we can call on element objects. Um, get text is one of the important ones to remember. Okay, so we have two new uh, methods now, find all and get text. Um, if I want to, if I do this find all thing, it's going to give me a list of everything um, that it matches, and it doesn't even matter if those things aren't next to each other. I just want to have one example like that to be clear. So if I say find all B, I'm going to get items, I'm going to get Y, and as you can see, both in the HTML and down below, those things are in completely different places in the hierarchy. Doesn't matter. It's all going to end up in a list together. Okay. Another thing you're sometimes going to do is instead of find all, you're just going to call find. And, uh, and what that's going to do is instead of giving you a list, it's just going to give you the first one it finds. Right? So you're going to use this when you just uh, when you don't want all of them. Maybe you want just the first one. 
or or maybe more commonly, you might already know somehow that there's only one element like this on the page, and you just want to get it, right? You don't want to have to bother getting the list and then looking through the list. If there are zero elements of that type on the page, it's going to return none, right? And that's why I have this line of code here, assert li not equal to none. I would, I would rather just know that right away rather than going on and maybe finding out later in my code. So in this case, I'm doing a find all and I'm looking for my unordered list and, and I find it, right? I find the ULL tag and, and the corresponding element. And one of the very cool things I can do is once I find um, an element somewhere in the hierarchy, I can search beneath that element, right? So I, I can do something like this. Uh, UL is an element, and I can say UL dot find all of B. Normally, I would say doc find all, and that would find everything. But when I start a spe specific element, and I say UL dot find all of B, it only finds the Bs underneath that element, all right? So, so you can see in this picture below, there's two Bs, right? But I only find one of them. I only find the one that's beneath UL. It doesn't have to be directly beneath it. Right? I, under, under UL I have LI, and under LI I have B, but that's enough, right? As long as it's somewhere recursively beneath the element I'm searching from, I grab it. Right? So this is very powerful, right? What I'm asking here is, well, what are the bold items on my list? So what are the bold, bulleted items? And I can find that quickly. If I wanted to, I could even uh, bring that to a single line, right? I can say doc.findUL, that returns the UL element, and then I can immediately call on that find all bold elements. Okay, so that was a lot how we can find elements. Once we have them, what can we do, right? Remember those three things elements contain. I'm gonna keep saying this. They have attributes, text, and other elements. And so I'm gonna show you examples on how to get those three things. And I'm going to do that with, uh, with an example that kind of shows up in three ways. At the top here, I show what you see, right? What would uh, this web content look like on a web page? In the middle, I'm showing you what the HTML code looks like for that. And uh, then in the bottom, I'm showing you a Python snippet uh, to get the interesting piece of information, right? So, so the first thing I might want to do is I might want to find the other elements, right? So what I can do is I can say link dot, link equals doc dot find a, right? So that finds the a tag. And then if I say link dot children, that's going to give me all the elements inside of that link element, right? Remember that uh, we were kind of saying that we have this vocabulary, we have like parents and children and parents contain the children, right? In this case, that a tag is the parent, and it has three children. It has the three elements it contains, the italic, um, the click, and then that other piece, that bold. All right, so I'll get three things back there. The other thing I could do is I could say, I don't care what other tags are inside of this element. I just want the text. I don't care if it's bold, italic, or whatever. Just give me one string with all the text. All right, so if I do that here, I'm going to get one string back. Please click here. I don't care those came from different pieces. There's no list involved. One simple string. All right, so you don't remember that, right? Remember that we have dot children. That's actually, look at that, that's not a method, right? I'm not calling it. So children is not a method. Get text is a method, right? I have to put the parentheses after that. Last piece, also not a method, uh, is dot adders, right? If I have an element link and I say dot adders, that's going to give me a dictionary, right? It's going to give me a Python dictionary, actually. Remember that I said I, I, I like to think about um, HTML attributes as being uh, kind of like a dictionary, right, where the attribute name is a key and the attribute value as well, you know, just a dictionary value. Um, when I have it in this model, right, in Beautiful Soup, I can get an actual Python dictionary instead of just that kind of uh, Python dic and so that dictionary that we were imagining uh, last time. So in this case, well, the the key is href, right? That was the attribute name, so now it's a key, and the value is schedule.html, right? That was the attribute value, now it's a value in my dictionary.
Okay. Um, I, I wish this were in person because now would be a great time for a lot of questions, and I'm, and I'm sure you have them. Um, but, but I'll forge ahead. Okay, let, let's do the main example um, of this lecture. It's actually three parts, right? If you see I have demo stage one, two, and three. Um, we're going to go through that. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start. Uh, let, me, let me escape this. You know, one thing you should do, right, is that if you're on a website, um, you should go to this page, robots.txt on the page. Lots of sites will have that. And this will have some, some rules about what to do in terms of, of downloading um, content from their website, right? It can actually create cost and load for uh, downloading things from people's website. So if you're doing that a lot, right, if you're downloading lots of pages, uh, you should read and understand that. Um, for this, right, I'm just trying to download 50 pages and, and doing it once. It's not going to produce that much load for Wikipedia. Um, so we're not going to talk about that for now. Um, okay, so I'm going to start here on this page, a list of U.S. states, and let's go to this. I'm going to open this up. All right, so here we have all the, all the 50 U.S. states, and I scroll down, and I see there's this big table, right? Um, where's Wisconsin? Let me go see Wisconsin. Um, so if I click on Wisconsin, then, then I can go here. There's a bunch of information, and, uh, and on the right I have all these stats, right? I can have the total area, right? I can have um, what is the width and height of the state, uh, what percent of the state is water, lots of statistics. And my goal is to automatically get all the information in this table into a dictionary and I want to do that for all 50 states. Right, right, so there's lots of pieces to this, right? I mean one piece is that I have to go to this page here and extract all the links. That's step one. Uh, step two is after I've extracted all those links I want to download all those pages as HTML to my computer. I want those to be files. Uh, and then finally, step three, I want to have a little function that can open one of those files and give me a dictionary from it. And, and maybe step four, or maybe this is part of step three, is I want to combine those dictionaries and, and, and create a data frame from them. Okay, so let's start with step one. Uh, we would really like to get some content out of this page, right? So I'm going to copy this and, uh, and let me head over here to my notebook. Uh, so that, that will be my URL that I'm starting with. Um, you know, I may have to import some stuff here, won't I? Um, one of the things I may have to import is, oh, let me make this larger. One of the things I may have to import is requests, right? And uh, and, right, because we have to actually have to download that page, and that will give us the HTML. But then to actually make any value from that HTML, I have to use the other module, which is beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Actually, it's not like that. It's from BS4 import beautiful soup. Okay, so BS4 is the name of the module. Uh, beautiful soup is, is the new type. Okay, so that's good. Here I have my URL. And maybe the first part is I say r equals requests.kit. I'm going to grab that URL. And uh, remember what I always like to do after I download these things? I like to do a raise for status. Right? If I had some typo here or something, uh, I want to know that, right? Unless I have raise for status, I, will, I might not notice. So I'm going to do that. And then here's r. Great. It's 200, of course it's 200, right? Otherwise this would have caused an exception. And then if I want to, I can say dot txt, and that's not a function, is it? Sorry, txt, and wow, there's a bunch of stuff there for that page, right? So this is gonna be some work. We have to kind of dig in and find out how to pull out all the information that we care about. Okay, and this is not JSON, right? If this were a JSON file, right, then I could do something like this, uh, but it's not, right? It's HTML, so we're going to have to do some hard work to make any sense of this. Okay, 
So what I want to do is I want to create a new beautiful soup object from that text. Right, remember when I, uh, remember when I'm creating a beautiful soup object? What are the two pieces? Uh, the first piece is an HTML string, and the second piece is always HTML.parser. And, and for this string, well, look here. This is a big string, right? So this is what I'm going to want to put down here. For my HTML string, it's just coming from there. And we delete this, and I run that. And uh, let me let me capture that. This is not a string here, right? See, there's no quotes. Let me capture that in a variable, like so. And let's just look at the type of this thing. I just want you to see that it's a new type. Yep, it's that beautiful soup type that we imported. Okay. So one of the things I told you you could do is you could printify it. I could say doc dot printify and. Uh, and, well, that's not helping any unless I print it. If I actually print it, then, then you can see it did a little bit of this work for me of kind of creating more tabs. Uh, that helps a bit, but still, there's a lot of work to kind of dig through this. Um, I, I need to somehow figure out where that table is. And, and you know what I like to do when I, I'm trying to dig through these things, um, at least in Chrome? What I'll do is I'll look for a piece of information I'm interested in, and I'll highlight it. And then I'll right click and I'll say inspect. And that opens up these, um, what, what they're called as Chrome developer tools. And uh, the Chrome developer tools will help you kind of understand all the elements on the page. Lots of details here um, that we could get into if this were a web development class. But what I see is like, okay, well, there's my, there's my hyperlink, no surprise. And that's inside of this span thing. What's a span? We're not going to talk about it. Uh, that's inside of a th, which is inside of a tr, which is inside of a t body, uh, which is inside of what, what was that inside of? That was inside of a table. Um, so you might be noticing there's this kind of real world example is doing a lot of things I didn't talk about last time, right? What did I talk about? I talked about um, I talked about table tags. And I talked about TRs, table rows. Uh, I didn't talk about T body. I didn't talk about TH. T body we don't care about. Uh, but TH, what's going on there? Uh, so what I taught last time is that there's this TD tag, and TD stands for table data. And if I look at something like this, or if I inspect this over here, we see, sure enough, that's a table data like I, I told you about. But, but things like this over here, like in this first uh, column and first row, if I inspect those, um, what you're going to see is that's a TH, that's a table header, right? So the, the first row is special and the first column is special. Uh, not all HTML tables are going to do this, but this one we can see as. Okay, so I think the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out where the table is on the uh, on here, right? So, so let's try to find this table. And, uh, and so I'm going to do that. I'm going to head back here and uh, I'm going to get rid of that for now. Let me do this. I'm going to say, I'm going to say document.find. I'll just see if I can find one table on that page. So I'm going to find that table. You know, I'm kind of curious how many how many rows are in that table. Let me say find all tr, and let me look at the length of this. Fifty-two. I guess I actually I actually found the first table immediately, right? Maybe we don't always get so lucky. There might be other things on this page that count as tables. So so maybe if I was trying to be more careful, what I might do is I might say find all. Of table and let me look at that. That's gonna give me a list. What is the length of this list? Right, let me look at that. Actually, I guess there's only one table. Last time I did this demo, there were many tables on here, some of which were had states and other ones not. Okay, so I guess th this is kind of going a little bit easier than expected. Right? I can just say table equals stock dot find of table, and then I have my table I'm interested in. Um, from that, let's do my table row. So I'm going to say table .find all tr, and let me just I may add an assert in here that length of trs is greater than uh, greater than or equal to 50. Um, why am 
by doing that? Well, I mean, web pages change over time, and let's say later they have another table at the beginning or something like that, then, then this code would break, right? And I want to find out immediately, hey, I'm looking at a table that doesn't have 50 rows, so obviously it can't have the 50 states. Um, why greater than or equal to instead of uh, just equal? Well, there's these other pieces at the top, right? These are rows too, and so it's going to be a little bit more, uh, more than 50. Okay, so I have my table rows. Now let's loop over those. For uh, TR in table rows, let me just print it, I think is the first step. Okay, so that seems good. Um, you know, I think this next piece I like to do is I'd like to figure out what these links are. Right, remember those were TD tags. So in each row, I want to get the first TD tag. So I'm going to say, I'm sorry, not TD, TH. I'm going to say TH equals TR dot find. And I'm looking for a TH tag, table header. Find table header. Find table rows. And current row. Okay, let's look at this. I'm going to print the TH. And, uh, and this seems good, right? I, I guess here I have name, capital. Where did that come from? I guess that here is name, right? Not quite what I'm looking for. Oh, excuse me. Um, but eventually, if I go down farther, I should actually see, okay, here's a, here's a legitimate link to another page. Okay, there's the name of the state, and then there's the link. And down here too, right? Here, here I have another A tag, right? And then, then in Alaska. So, so let me do this. Um, I'm going to find some links within that first cell. So I'm going to say links equals th dot find all A tags, right? This is not finding all the links on the page. It's just looking for the ones in that cell. Let me just print the link of the links. Okay, I guess there's a, in most cases, there's one, which is good, right? First, first two rows, yeah, there's no links there. I guess I have, a, I have something weird going on here where it's two. Well, let me see what's happening there. So I'm going to say if link of links is greater than one, let's print what those links are. Uh, something's weird with Kentucky. Uh, let's draw a look at that. Okay, well, what happened here with Kentucky? Uh, and there, there you see it. I guess we have some little footnote, right, that we aren't really interested in. But we have that. I guess that happens in a few cases, right? You see this is messy, right? They aren't trying to make it so that, oh, every state is uniform. And uh, every time you do this for a new page, or you're going to have to kind of dig through and, and try to find these peculiarities. And who knows, maybe next time I do this demo, there's going to be other peculiarities, right? But but for now, kind of looking at this, what I'm seeing is that um, in each case, it, it's the first link that we're interested in, and the second one is the footnote. Okay, so what we'll do here is um, heading back here. We'll just look at the links of zero, right? So so I'll say uh, links of zero. Maybe I'll just print that one. And then I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to just say, I'm going to get rid of this too. I'm going to say print first link. Okay. And, uh, well, of course that breaks right away. Because remember the first, first row didn't have any links in it. So what I'll say now is if length of links is less than one, I want to skip that one. So, so we're not all the way there, but looking at this output, um, you can see we're in, in, in pretty good shape, right? I mean, we have all these A tags. Um, we have the names of the states, that's cool. And, and we have the links, right? We have this href part, right? So let me, maybe let me just, as we're going through this, I want to review something, right? I realize I keep saying this, but it's good to review, right? So elements may contain three things, right? One is other elements. Two is they can contain a text. And three, they can contain attributes. And I just want to be very clear for these three things uh, where that's showing up in the code. Now. 
down here right? because I'm doing all three. Other elements, that's everything I've done so far. Right? I show that a TR has a TH in it, and a TH contains an A. Right? So I, I've done lots of examples of this. But let's do an example of the text. Right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is tell me to save this in the variable. I'll save that in L. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let's grab the first link. Let's let's instead of printing L, let's print L dot get text. Do that, and, and look at that. I get a nice clean display of all the state names. Right. That was this example. Right. This is all these search things with find all. The text is this piece with the get text. Now let's do that third piece, right? The H wrap and the link is in an attribute. Right? Let me just show you all the attributes. I'm going to say L dot adders. And, and you see I get a Python dictionary. And all I really care about is this piece, right? This is the piece I'm going to have to download. Right, so what I should really do is I should save that, uh, save that somewhere. But let me just pull it out. Right, this is a regular dictionary, and the key is, well, I guess the key corresponding to this value is href, isn't it? Right, so that's what I should say there. I should say href just like that, and I should run that. And now this is really good, right? This is kind of shaping up. Uh, I'm getting all of those links. It's not a complete link, right? It's uh, just like in, um, just like with files, we have absolute and relative paths. Uh, the same thing with hyperlinks, right? So let's say I grab Alabama here, and uh, you can see it's this piece right here that's trying to change, right? I can paste that, and it's relative to that. There's Alabama, right? So I guess everything is relative to simple Wikipedia.org. So, so what I should really do here is I should say href equals, you know, this piece. Well, it's, it's really that string plus that, isn't it? Those are the two pieces, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put off the name. And then I'm going to put off that hyperlink. So I'll do that. Right, so I have attributes for now. That's the attributes. Okay, all these three examples. Binding, text, and attributes. So let me, let me just check a few of these. That looks good. There's Alaska. Okay, so this is so far so good. Um, what I would like to do now is to download each of these pages um, somewhere else. Right? So actually what I'm going to do is this. Um, I'm going to create a dictionary. Uh, URL, URL. What, what happened there? I had, I had a typo. URL, uh, maybe I'll say state URLs. That's an empty dictionary. Well, one of the comments I often like to do when I create a dictionary is say what the keys and values are. And I think that will really help crystallize things in your mind. The key is a state name and the value. Uh, the value is. A URL for that state. So in each of these cases, right, um, this was a state name and this was the, the URL. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say state URLs of uh, this piece equals a trap. Let me just look at that thing. State URLs. Okay, very cool. That was stage one, right? That was stage one of the demo. Is find links to all pages. Now we're entering into stage two, which is download all of those pages. So I'm going to loop over these things. I'm going to say for. Well, I'm going to think about what a good variable name is here. I'm going to say for all of those in state. URLs. Um, well, state URLs was this dictionary here, and so this is going to loop over the keys, right? So maybe all these keys. So, I mean, one thing I could put here is I could just say key or K. Uh, but since I know that they're all state names, maybe maybe state name would be a better variable. Okay. 
Now I also am interested in this piece because that's what I actually have to download. So I'm going to say um, URL equals, well this is my dictionary and this is my key, so I can say dictionary uh, brackets and key like so. And make sure I can just print these off still. Okay, we still have our data. Let's actually download it. Instead of printing it, I'm going to say requests.get. That's going to give me a response object, which I've been calling R. I can also call response. I'm going to do a response.raise for status. And, uh, and then I'm going to say, um, well, I, I, have, I have a string there. Let, let me do this. I'm going to say response.text. Uh, and let me just like print off the first 100 characters just to make sure this is kind of working. Now this is going to take a while to run, right? There's 50 states. You know what I should do uh, to make sure that as I'm debugging this, I, I kind of want to deal with a smaller data set. I'm just going to grab the first three for now and make that note here to do. Remove slides to get all data. Okay, so let me run this. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Um, I, I guess I kind of made it harder because right? I put everything in the dictionary and I just like to loop over three things. Uh, you know what I should do is I should maybe grab the state names out to a separate list, right? I'm going to say state names equals state URLs dot keys and I'm going to get a sorted version of that. Sorted at is actually kind of nice because normally I'm putting a list in here, but I can put anything that's iterable here and it will automatically loop over those things and give me a sorted list. So even though this is an iterator, this is going to give me back a sorted list and that's what I'm going to loop over instead. Right? The advantage of looping over the list of keys instead of looping over them in the dictionary is that now I can actually, now I can actually slice. Right? Okay, very cool. It looks like I downloaded it for those three states. All right? Now, now what I want to do with that is I want to save that content in an HTML file. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say f equals open. I have to come up with some name, so I'm writing to it. f.close. And then I need to write some string to it. And the string will be, it will be that text, right? It'll be response.text. Uh, what do I want the name to be? Uh, I think the name of my file should probably be based off of the state name. Probably with a .html glued at the end. So let me run that. You know what I should really do is as I'm looping through this, I should put off what state name I'm on. Okay. So far, so good. Let, let, let's go look over here. And yeah, it looks like I downloaded these things. Uh, it doesn't look quite the same, right? It doesn't have the same formatting uh, when I download it, right? Because there's other files involved. Uh, but that's fine, right? I, I can still get an idea of what's going on, and why isn't that one viewing? There we go. Right, and we'll still be able to pull out details from this table. Okay. You know, I think we're ready to do the whole thing, right? Once we get the basic thing working, we ought to do it on all the data, right? So I'm going to run this like so. And it will download all of these states. Cool, and Wyoming is the last one. And I have all of them here. Well, something I may encourage you to do. Um, when you're writing programs that download to your computer, is check if you already have the file on your computer, and if you do, just skip the download. And the reason for that is it will save you time um, when you rerun your notebook, and you won't hit people's websites as hard. Right? 
so let me just show you what that looks like here. I may say, I might grab this piece and actually put that in a variable called path. Right, so I may say something like this. I may say path equals that. And um, right, and in the end, what I'm doing is I'm creating that path. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if os.path.exists, right, if it exists, I mean I already downloaded it. Uh, I want to skip all of this, right? And the way I skip that is I say continue. Right? I guess for this OS piece, I have to import that. And, and like I've said, good habit to do that up at the top, right? That's just good style. So now if I run this a second time, remember how slow it was before? Wow, you can, you can see that's instant, right? So you can see this is ticking up. I'm actually running it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kind of cheating the demo. Um, it, it's probably fast because it, it already downloaded all of these things, right? If I, do, if I delete a few of these, Right, let me delete that for first uh, five there. Trash, okay. Um, and then I run it again. It will kind of grab those five again. And it just grabs what it needs. Right, so then if it's interrupted or anything like that, um, you'll save the work you've already done. All right, so I highly encourage you to do that, right? Check if you already have it downloaded before you repeat it. Okay, so now we're in pretty good shape. We've downloaded all these files. Uh, let's get some interesting information out of them. And, uh, and I think I'm about time to write one function uh, which will do. So this is stage three, um, extract info from states, state files. Okay. What I want to do here is load one of these things, parse out that HTML file, and, and then try to if we can, pull out this information. So let me actually see what this looks like here. Um, let's say I want to pull out capitals. Let me let me inspect this. I, I see it's in this table, right? There's a bunch of rows, and each row is going to have two cells, right? You can see that. Um, when I when I move my mouse over these, it highlights it on the left, right? There's going to be all these rows with two cells, and so what I want to do is I want to loop over all these things and I want to grab the key from the first piece and grab the value from the second piece and create a dictionary, right? So the key in my dictionary will be capital, the value will be Montgomery. Okay, so we have a path to my state file and I say f equals open path and, uh, and remember before how we did this when I was um, Creating my document. What, what did I do? I uh, well, it's way back here, right? I created this document a variable which was referring to a beautiful soup object, and I did that with a string I got from the request module. In this case, in this example, that string is going to come to a file that's already on my computer, all right? So when I'm down here, all right, I need a string here instead of it coming from a web request. It's just going to come from that file. And then we close that file when I'm done. Okay, and maybe I'll just print that document as a first step. So let me load state and what better example than, than, than uh, Wisconsin. Okay, so I'm going to do that and great. And I'm getting, what was the type of this thing? Let me not forget that. Great, I'm getting my nice beautiful soup object from that, from that file. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to loop over all the rows in that file. So I'm going to say for tr and document that find all tr. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's find the cells. In. I'm going to say tr dot find all. Uh, and now I have a dilemma, right? If I say td, if I say td, it would get something like this. And if I say th, it would get something like this. One of the cool things about it is I can search for a list that contains ball. I can do this, I can say th, td, I don't care, I want a list of any of those things. So let me, let me print the length of these. Let's run this. Uh, I don't want to actually print the cells, I said I want to print the length of them. Okay, so lots of, lots of rows on this table. A lot of them are the twos, which are representing that table with that big information. 
information piece, right? So that's what I'm interested in. If length of cells uh, equals two, then I'll have the key be the first cell dot uh, get text, and the value will be that second cell dot uh, get text. Let me just print those two. That's a good enough starting place for now. Okay. Flag, CL, Denim, Wisconsin, Light, Capital, Madison. Pretty cool. Okay. I actually have to think of a dictionary now. So I'm going to say stats equals dictionary. And in my dictionary, that T will map to that value. And when I'm all done, I'm going to return that dictionary. And that's too much printing going on, isn't it? All right, so there's lots of garbage on that page, right? But I can see lots of interesting things. I can see, you know, what is a denim? That's what, what that's what you call the people who live in a place, right? The denim for uh, nah, I can never spell it. I have to look it up again, don't I? The denim for Wisconsin is Wisconsinite. The capital, the capital for Wisconsin is Madison. Lots of other stats there. I could see all the other things I could pull out, and maybe things about uh, the, the current uh, politics, how they organize uh, the, the legislative branch. Lots of information here. Um, and, and you can imagine loading that in a data frame, and I would do that if I weren't already over 50 minutes. Uh, but I want to respect your time, even though this is a video. Uh, so I'll end it there. And maybe next lecture, just let me know if you have any questions from this one that you didn't have time to ask. Uh, thanks and hope you're having a good weekend.